Hello, I'm Cindy Neely and it's time for the shortcut. Coming up on tonight's show, temporary student loan relief is scheduled to end August 31st. While the extension has given borrowers more time to prepare for student loan repayments, it's also opened up opportunities for scammers. Joining me on the shortcut to tell you how to avoid student loan scams is Mary Jo Terry, a student loan debt scam expert. Hi, Mary. Hi. So first, how can we spot student loan repayment scams and what are some of the telltale signs? Some of the telltale signs are companies actually calling you and asking for your personal information, saying that they can assist you with loan forgiveness, they can assist you with income driven repayments, which is lowering your monthly payments. They can assist you with filling out a FAFSA form or obtaining additional grants or scholarships. Um, they oftentimes will ask for your personal information. If it's just your student loan servicer, they have your personal information. They have your name, your date of birth, your address, all of this information. But the scariest part is they're also asking for your bank account information. So they're saying, hey, pay me $2.99 and I will make sure your uh, auto debit is updated or pay me X amount of dollars and I'll assist you with completing federal loans. And unfortunately, some of us haven't looked at our student loans in the last two, two and a half years. So we're thinking we're actually talking to our loan servicer. And if someone has fallen victim to a scam, what should they do first? Well, the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to studentaid.gov. A lot of us haven't updated our profile information. The reason I'm sending you to studentaid.gov is over the last two, two and a half years, student loan servicers have changed. You may not know who your servicer is. So update your profile information, notify your servicer. Now, if you provided bank account information, you want to immediately contact your financial institution. They'll actually put a fraud alert on your account. And so anything any electronic withdrawals or regular withdrawals that you have, they're going to send you through a second step of security so you can verify the information. Last but not least, if you've given your personal information, you're uncomfortable with it, actually put a fraud alert on, your, on through the credit bureaus. You can do that online or making a phone call, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, so that if somebody has your personal information, name, date of birth, social, new address, whatever, if they go to open something, they're gonna notify you immediately and send you through a verification process. If it wasn't you, they're going to immediately stop it, immediately deny it, and prevent any negativity from happening. Great tips. That's so good to know with that deadline approaching. Thank you, Mary, for joining us. That's all the time that we have for tonight's show. I'm Sydney Neely, and I'll catch you next time on The Shortcut.